Hi guys, today's video, I'm gonna be talking about 10 tips and tricks on ways to save money while opening your own home daycare. I started my home daycare journey about three years ago and have been open for a year. I purchased a lot of my stuff at rummage sales, garage sales, Goodwill. I asked friends and family, anything and everything to get my stockpile growing. I discovered my love of the Dollar Tree and the Dollar Spot at Target. So if you're looking to start a home daycare or just starting out with your own home daycare, continue watching for my 10 tips and tricks. Tip number one, never pay for advertising. Okay, here is an example of what I purchased on Vistaprint. Now I wanna say I bought like 500 of these for like $200. So we're talking a lot of money, guys. This was both front and back. And I simply just put now enrolling. I had my business name, the date I was opening, a little bit about myself, my weekly rates, phone number, some pictures of my setup on the front. And then on the back, again, my hours, my opening date, some more pictures of my home, and then just a little like description. 500 copies, $200, zero phone calls. This was the biggest bust. I would never encourage anyone to pay for advertising. My husband and I, we went to countless houses and passed these out. We live in a very large, um, development. I thought for sure there's tons of kids here. Now mind you, when I opened up my daycare, we were new to the city, to the community. We had lived about 30, 40 minutes north of here, so we did not know anyone. I was coming into this, you know, blind. I was completely, I did not have any connections. I didn't even know one family. So I thought, oh, this will be perfect. We'll hang them on the door. Because at first I was going to do postcards and that was even more expensive. So I thought, okay, the door flyers or hangers, I'm not sure what they're called, would be a, the you know second best option. No. Let me show you what I ended up doing. I created this on Microsoft Word using the same pictures. I had my daycare name, now enrolling, again, the date that I enrolled, um, a little bit about myself, the hours, and then I put where I was located. I literally put this on one of those Facebook mommy sites and every single one of my families came from that. And I spent zero dollars. I simply just made this, downloaded it on the app. So number one tip, do not pay for advertising. My number two tip is buy used. Now both these grocery carts were bought used. The one on the right, the little Tykes um, little car one, I got for $10 off a of Facebook site. The green one I got for $5 off of Craigslist. And then these two little um, Tykes cars, $3 each at a garage sale. Those retail right now online for $29.99. So you cannot beat that for $3. I scored both of these Cozy Coops from the same seller on a Facebook uh, mommy site group for $5 each. Now they did not come with the stickers. I purchased the stickers off of, I believe Amazon. They were $10 per car. So all in all, I invested $15 for the car. I mean, you could go as cheap as $5 for the car if you didn't want to add the stickers. They were filthy when we got them. The seller had told us ahead of time, we have a power wash, so my husband simply just used a power wash, and they look pretty good, you know. These right now retail for $59.99 on Target's website. So for a $30 investment as opposed to $120, I think that was a great score. I not only buy most of my outdoor toys secondhand, I also buy most of my indoor dramatic play toys secondhand as well. That Little Tykes grocery store, I got at a school sale for $2, guys, $2. And then the Little Tex grocery cart, pretty sure I got that at a rummage sale, probably for under $5. I know that still retails right now for $25. So to pay, you know, under five bucks, that's a great score. Not only just toys, I buy a lot of my books used. Like these two books right here, I got from Goodwill. This big truck book, this is a hardcover book. I mean, just look at the pictures. The illustrations are very bright. The kids love looking at them. All little kids can associate, you know, with cars and trucks. I got this for 90 cents 
at Goodwill and it looks pretty good, the shape. And then if you want more of like a reading story, again, this is like a hardcover um, book, card, not even cardstock, I don't know what it is, just a hardcover book for 90 cents as well. Okay, my tip number three is make Dollar Tree your new BFF. I'm gonna show you guys an assortment of different things you can get from the Dollar Tree. First, I'm gonna show you things that you could use for a preschool setting, um, an older toddler setting, for your own you know, kindergarten setting. They have the greatest borders here. I just picked this one up recently. This is just an assortment of like jungle animals. They have um, the wall calendars that comes with all the cards with special cutouts. And then the back of it is just the calendar. Again, $1, you can get multiple of these, put them in different spots in your um, home. I love that they have all the classroom decor. You can write the names. I use these on cubbies, um, on the diaper bins. They have such an assortment of that. I love these My Stories. The kids, you can start this at the beginning of your program and have it go you know throughout the year and have them do a page each week each day make little mini stories and see how they develop over time they have the spinner this is great for teaching number recognition and this is what a four pack for a dollar you cannot beat that i also get a lot of my books here this is just an example like they have colors and shapes you know you can mix and match them they have numbers now these both say for kindergarten, but these are totally acceptable for like a preschool program. I got an assortment of these boxes. I simply just printed out a little label for a writing box. I put all my crayons and markers. They come in assorted colors. They, they are stackable. What's also great with this is that you don't have to just use this for writing. You can use this as a learning tool. You can put you know different yellow things on the table and have them go to the yellow bin. This is a great find. They also have great books. This little engine that could. This book is so colorful and it's a huge book and they have a lot of series. I've gotten a lot of books that have, you know, four books to the series. And then you can always get your little, um, your charts. You can do a chore chart, you can do behavior chart. You know, again, this is a 16 count, $1. I wanted to show you my container of like flashcards and I got this container at Michael's, I wanna say for $25. And I'm pretty sure it came with all of the clear trays. I just, I'm probably using a couple of those for something else. All of these flashcards are either from the Target Dollar Spot or Dollar Tree, one dollar. I wanted to show you a couple of things, like this animal one. This must be, I think this is from the Target Dollar Spot. But look at the colors on this. You know, they're double-sided. You can teach them all about animals, one dollar. The Little People brand is Walmart, or Dollar Tree, I'm sorry. They have alphabet, they have counting. Here's a picture you know, of one of the peacocks and it has a letter P on the back. At the Target dollar spot, they have a lot of these. Now usually you'll find these at the end of summer in their school section, letter matching. It comes with its own um, clothespin and you simply just match the letter to what the picture is. Now this says ages three and up, K through third grade. And then in here, I just have a whole bunch. You know, I do like opposite games. The Dollar Tree has pickup pairs. Um, again, shapes and colors. I want to say that's from the Target Dollar Spot. Same or different. I mean, you can see, like, I just have numerous games in here that I can do. This is a great transition. You know, we do a lot of these right after our free play or right after art or before lunch. And it just keeps the kids calm. They love going through this. It keeps them engaged. And for $1, it's easy to, you know, get a stockpile going. Moving on to baby stuff that the Dollar Tree carries, you can get these little fleece blankets. Either you can use these for your own infants, just lay them on the ground, have the babies laying on there, or you can use this in dramatic play for housekeeping. This is super cute. I get a lot of my bibs here. One dollar, they have the pocket. They usually come in boys and girls. I always get my bottle brushes here. Now these last, you know, a couple of weeks, but again, one dollar, you can't beat that. I buy my washcloths. This is a four count for one dollar. I always stockpile on these. These are great. They don't um, they don't shrink or anything when you wash them. I love buying this. So you can get a lot of stuff for your infants at the Dollar Tree as well. The last thing I want to show you is what you can do as far as like any kind of like sensory bins you're looking to start, any science um, 
things you're looking to do. I buy so many of my sensory bin things from here. Like this one, I'm getting ready to do a, like a whole bird collage. Um, they have butterflies. I mean, all of this stuff is $1 each. I mean, you can reuse this for several things. Like the butterflies, it's a two count for $1. Most of them have this little like metal clip on the back of them. I always had these cute little like science things, these little like bug catchers, just different things you can put them in. Um, the nets and stuff like that. You can find binoculars, magnifying glasses. So there's so many different things you can do for both sensory and science. So again, guys, make the Dollar Tree your BFF. Step, tip number four, find free resources and use them. Everything I'm about to show you, I have downloaded for free. The only thing I paid for was the paper and the ink to print stuff up on. So I do my monthly calendar. I simply go into TPT. I find a free um, school year calendar. Usually they go by like 2019, 2020. I pick the month that I'm working on. Right now I just did this one for June of this year. I go into Canva, which is a free program. I'll leave the link below for that. And I simply just create my monthly calendar on here, post it online for my parents to see, hang them up in my home, to remind me and on my parents' bulletin board what we're doing for the month. Again, all of this is free. Another thing I like to do are bingo cards. You can find so many templates. You can just Google free bingo cards. Go on Pinterest. Pinterest is a great resource, um, not only for getting ideas, but for coming across websites that have free downloaded resources for you. So on here, I will simply just cut these out and pass out the bingo cards for the kids. I simply printed this on cardstock and laminated it. Another one, I love this one, this parking lot full of color. I again printed this on cardstock, laminated it. And here, this is just an assortment of cars. Each page has four cars, and I don't, maybe there's like eight different colors. All I did was put Velcro dots. I pass these out to the kids, several colors, and then we go back through and I have the kids match up the colors. This is a great um, resource for kids like ages one to three that are just starting out learning their colors. Again, free. Another thing I like to do is when I buy something and it comes with like cardboard, extra cardboard, I use it. You can put this underneath you know, if you are painting, let me just put the bingo card here. If I'm painting on something I don't want it to get all over, this is a great resource. You can do so much with this, or you can even make a craft out of this. I love file games. This is a cat matching file game. I simply just found a bunch of different pictures of cats on Google. I blew them up in Microsoft Word, and I've made a game out of it. I've laminated it. I put it on paper stock or cardstock because you want it to be sturdy laminated it and just stapled it to a manila folder. You can buy these manila folders. I think it's like a 10 count at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And then inside, I just simply, again, use the double Velcro and the kids match them up. I do this for all my themes. The kids, they really like this. So that is another option for a free resource. Right here, I'm gonna show you my color book with my binder. Again, I just probably found this free resource online. Everything I'm showing you in here is free. I made this little color game I downloaded from some kind of site. Use my dots. So I did a red one, a green one, a blue and a yellow one. Now sometimes they don't have all the colors. I wanna say this site that I found this on, it was only these four colors, which hey, it's free, it's fine. You can print out just different colors um, and put you know the name of the color on here. I've done that. And in here, I just made a binder of different colors. Again, these are all, this is from preschoolpalace.org. These are all freebies online. We do a lot of little books we send home with the kids. They color it, we send the book home. This I usually just print out on regular computer paper. Um, let me see, here's another little book. Another little book, so you can see like, there's so many awesome resources. Here is a picture collage I found. We just went through the different um, pictures on here. Again, a book for brown. So looking at like TPT, Pinterest, those are such great ideas. 
And my last little tip for free resources is going to the library. If you don't have a lot of money to stock up on books, go to the library, rent the books. Most libraries, I mean, they have like probably like a 20 book limit. So you can definitely switch out your themes each week. I do that a lot. I mean, I buy a lot of books, but sometimes I don't have books that pertain to the theme that I'm working on. So I simply just go to the library. Tip number five is to buy off season. I always buy my holiday stuff after the holiday. That way I can stockpile for the next year. I'm just gonna show you what I do. I put all of my holiday stuff in these iris containers. I get these at Michael's when they're on sale for like $3 and I just stockpile them. Like for my St. Patty's Day one, I love buying like stickers. Target this year had these sun catchers. So these were normally a dollar. I think I got them for 50 cents when they were on sale. You can do their banners. Anything that's a dollar from them, usually it'll go down to like 50 cents. Um, I got these at Michael's. I think this, I don't know how many were in here. It was like a pack for $5. I think I got this for like a dollar fifty for all of these. So this will be a great little project for next year. Some of my Happy Valentine stuff. Again, Target has all of these little, um, like little felt envelopes. These are great. These are a dollar, so these are probably 50 cents. Again, stickers. I got these cookie cutters at Walmart. I want to say these were 98 cents. I want to say I got these for like a quarter. And I love doing um, stockpiling on like plates and stuff like that and cups you can do. And then the last little one right here is my Easter one. I found this kit at some kind of like, I don't not a consignment shop, but some kind of deals or us shop. I don't know how much it was normally. I got this for a dollar. So this would be great for next year. This little like Easter egg hunt kit. Again, I got stamps, Walmart, $1.98. I probably got these for like 50 cents or 75 cents. Stockpile on like straws, games, all of like the Easter kind of stuff you can use. And again, these, these are things that you can use year after year. So definitely a good tip, shop after the holiday. My number six tip is stockpile at the end of summer. What I'm going to show you are things that I typically buy, you know, usually, I'm not even going to say the end of summer, usually they start clearancing the school items at the beginning of August, so, but you know what I mean, end of summer. This construction paper, this is eight different colors, 120 sheets, I got these clearanced out at Walmart, 50 cents. I like to use these folders for my parents' information when I have new families enroll. I got those at Target, 13 cents each. These composition folders right here, these letter papers, I got for a quarter each at Walmart. I love stockpiling on markers. Usually you can get, you know, the eight or 12, however many it comes for quarters I've seen. And then crayons, I stockpile on those because we're always using crayons. One of the things I love to stockpile on is glue, especially glue sticks, because these, they're expensive. Okay, this one right here, ruined. But um, yeah, this usually comes in like a two or four pack and you know, you can get that probably for like 50 cents, which normally would be like a buck or two. I love index cards. I got this for a quarter. This is a 300 count. They come in different colors. So you can use these for games. You can use this for, you know, teaching letters, teaching numbers, teaching colors. I absolutely love and encourage anyone to shop at the end of summer. Check Walmart, Target. Dollar Tree doesn't mark their stuff down. You could go to like Office Max, um, but definitely, you know, when you see a deal, grab it. Like I probably grabbed 30 of those white folders. They were 13 cents each. I know I grabbed, those were a quarter. I think I grabbed like 20 of those because even if I don't go through them this year or next year, I have them for my third year. I mean, this amount of markers, I only have four toddlers, the rest are babies. This will last me for years. So that is my number six tip.
My tip number seven is ask friends or family if they have anything they would like to donate, like old toys, high chairs, baby clothes, anything, silverware, dishes. I got this climber from my dad's fiance. She literally hadn't used it in like 10 years for her grandchildren, and it was just sitting on the side of her house, and she asked me if I wanted it, and this is awesome. This would be like a $200 investment if I had to go and spend the money on my own. My tip number eight is sell stuff that doesn't fit your program. When I bought this little construction set that was last summer, the boys that I had were very little. This was too advanced for them. So I turned around and sold it and I invested in something that they could play with. I bought this little roller coaster. Now this is one of the items I wish I would have kept for this year because last year the kids were too little. I mean, lesson learned, you never know. But you always, you know, you can always buy different stuff with the money that you're selling it with. And then this is an example of things that the children have outgrown. I bought two separate gates for the babies and they simply just outgrew it. So I sold it, again, reinvested in something that they could play with. Sometimes you take a loss monetarily, sometimes you don't. But I always put that money right back into my program. Okay, my tip number nine is shop clearance. I love shopping for clearance. I'm just going to show you an example of some of the things that you can get. I found this pizza house. The kids absolutely love playing with this. I got this at TJ Maxx for $8. It was originally $20. I've gotten so much use out of this. And I simply, you can just pack it away, keep the box, pack it away when you're done, bring it back out later on. It came with the little house and the fake pizza and knife. Another thing I found is Target has great clearance stuff. A little tip with Target, their stuff is on the end caps. This right here, this Melissa and Doug pasta set, $6.26. I know this normally retails for $29.99. I've been eyeing this for like two years and I could not bring myself to spend 30 bucks on it. So when I saw it for $6, grabbed it. I wish there were more because I literally, I would have bought all of them for six bucks. Another thing I love to shop clearance is paint. Right here, Hobby Lobby, 50 cents, originally $1.99. Another one from Hobby Lobby, $2.29, got it for $0.57. Cents. And another one from Hobby Lobby, $3.99, got it for a dollar. Now, you know, this orange, this fuchsia color, the blue, it's not your typical orange and blue, but for children, for under a buck, it's perfect. They don't care what colors. I mean, I even scored a black one for $0.57. Cents. Um, right here, I got this thing of cards clearanced out for $0.69. Cents. It was $2.00. And just you know this is a great thing that kids can like play with they can play post office with you can even like write thank you card notes to your families for this 69 cents and my last tip for shopping clearance is books i love getting my books on clearance i got this one for 350 at marshall's I'm not sure what it normally retailed for but they're hardcover books they're great this wizard of oz color book look at it it looks so used this was brand new when i bought it the kids absolutely love it one dollar guys i love 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 shopping at um, tj maxx for their used books a tip with them is that these books will be right with the other books you just have to like turn them around and see what price it is they don't have this usually separate along with shopping for clearance look for great buys this 24 piece kid set it's the walmart brand five dollars guys this is a four piece set four cups four bowls four plates four bigger plates four sets of silverware five dollars this cup right here is the parents choice the sippy cup 97 cents at walmart i love this and then my final tip is tip number 10 budget budget at the beginning budget yearly, monthly, weekly, even if you want to do it daily. Some of the things I budget for is I budget for the food that I'm providing. I budget for learning materials, for art materials, for dramatic play, for outdoor toys, for, you know, just stockpiling cups and plates, things like that. One of the first things I did was I made a copy of this list. It's a price startup equipment list. I wrote down all the equipment that I wanted to have in my program and what I thought I would need. Pinterest is a great resource for looking for items that you would need to start up for your daycare. And then I put a maximum budget and then I put a minimum budget and then I put what I spent. So just some you know examples, renovations, toys, equipment, furnishings, office supplies. 
I mean, you think about it, you do need paper and envelopes and pens. And I use HP Insta Ink, which is such a great tool. I think it's as low as like either three or $5 a month and you can print out colored copies, you know, a certain amount. I think for the unlimited, it may be like $15 a month. I've been using HP Insta Ink for two years now, even before I opened my program. Um, you know, any kind of like insurance fees, licensing fees, I budget into when I do my CPR and first aid classes and stuff like that. Let's see, telephone, you know, your cell phone, you can budget for how much you think your gas bill is gonna go up, your electric bill is gonna go up, your water bill is gonna go up. So it's not just specific items that you need to budget for, you need to also budget for like a household because it is out of your household if you're doing home daycare and you are gonna have expenses, you know, gas expenses, going to purchase things. Um, there's so many different books that I have gotten online. I usually buy most of my like daycare related books on Amazon and I just go through and at the very beginning I kind of just broke it down by category. Okay, infants, I'm going to need this. Um, toddlers, I'm going to need this. If I have preschoolers, I'm going to need this. And so you can kind of see where planning ahead you know, is your benefit. You definitely want to have a budget. You just don't want to like go and spend how much ever, you know. Usually I think I give myself like a $20 a week budget. I'm going to link my budget 2019 video below. And you know, I budget for holidays. I budget for kids' birthdays. I just did a year, my first year and end of the year um, party. I budgeted for that. I just didn't go and spend whatever money I wanted to spend. Um, I budget for large purchases. Right now I want to get a quad stroller, so I'm budgeting for that. So definitely a great tip is to budget because the last thing you want to do is spend all the money that you're making weekly and not saving any money because at the end of the day, this is your paycheck. This is what you're living off of. This is probably helping your family. And so budget, budget, budget. So that's it guys. That's my 10 tips and tricks I have for you. I would like to know if you are in the process of opening your own home daycare or have your own home daycare, tongue twisting, what did you do to save money? Did you use free resources? Did you go to friends and family? I love getting new ideas for things. Um, my way is not the only way by any means. Like I said, I'm an amateur. I've only been doing this for one year, so I'm learning just as well as the rest of you guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so, and I will catch you in my next video.